Big news. I had a Hydra outbreak. Never happened to me before. And today we're going to cover how to get rid of Hydra step by step in the process that I went through to eradicate Hydra out of my aquarium. I'm at the later end, but we're going to go through step by step how to ensure your shrimp safety while getting rid of Hydra in your aquarium. So first and foremost, I noticed Hydra in my aquarium a little bit ago. I've seen it all over online. People have had it before. I would never thought I would experience it myself, but as always in this hobby, at some point you're going to encounter them if you're getting live plants, possibly. Hopefully you don't, but if you do, here's how to spot them. So right here in this area, I have a um, alternative R something plant. And there was a lot of debris building up and you'll see a clip now of them at their later stage dying off, which I just took. Um, but basically I saw a bunch of debris and I thought it was Dertitis building up in an area. I was like, man, I hope my shrimp go there and clean that all up. Um, and then on Sunday I went in and looked at my tank and you could see these little hydra everywhere. And I only noticed them because of images I've seen before. They essentially look like a, a sea anemone um, or jellyfish almost. And I noticed them and they're not that microscopic. They're like one to 20 millimeters in length. Um, and I noticed them, I didn't film them alive because I was embarrassed. So I'm sorry. You see the second stage and the last stage of me dosing. So I didn't film them alive with the tentacles coming out. So you'll just see like an image of what they look like here. Basically, this is what they look like. They have a stem and then they have these little tentacles that come out and that's what they latch onto to feed on small microfauna in your aquarium. The reason why you want to get rid of them is they breed rapidly. So they do um, spawn out, they call it budding, a ton of them. So mine started to spread from here all the way to about half this side of the tank and on some of the glass. And what they also do is eat your shrimp fry. So you definitely need to get rid of them if you have prized shrimp, just any shrimp in your aquarium because the small baby shrimp will perish to these hydra. Not the adult shrimps. I saw some of my adult shrimps actually go over where the hydra was. I think one of them may have gotten stung, but it was more just like they jumped back and went somewhere else to graze. So they don't harm your adult shrimps. So don't freak out. <laughs> but they do harm your shrimp fry. I just added the shrimp into this tank, so I wasn't worried about the fry yet, but the adult shrimps are fine. So take your time, do your research, plan which route you wanna go, but again, they do harm your shrimp fry. So what I did was is I first thought about doing um, hydrogen peroxide. And then I said, no, you know what? I have this holding tank here. I'm gonna pull out all of my invertebrates because I read no planaria, which I have, works excellent on them. So what I did was I pulled out all of my nearite snails because it's dangerous for nearite snails. Basically what this no planaria does is the, um, I forget the main ingredient, betel nut palm extract actually, essentially degrades um, soft inverts and prevents cell growth. So soft inverts being flatworms, um, which is planaria, or hydra, hydra in your aquarium, or also your nearite snails, which have a hard exoskeleton, <clears throat> but as they come out of the shell, it's a soft membrane. So that's they will also die as well. So I moved them over to this holding tank because I'm started the process already. We're on day three, the last day of the process. And I might do four because I'm showing, I'm going to show you what happens during that stage of process till they're eradicated. Um, I was going to do spot treatment of the hydrogen peroxide, but that's spot treatment. I don't know where the hydra went because it was all over up to here. So it could have been on the substrate, which I didn't really look at with my macro film just some of the areas where I can notice them, I could see them with the eye and the tentacles. So once you see it, I do 
from my experience, since I have shrimp and small fish and I can't get fish that eat the hydra because of my small shrimp, I needed to treat it with something. And I didn't want to completely ruin the bio, what would you say, the environment of the aquarium um, and use something really harsh and have to take out my shrimp, my sh super expensive shrimp, which you all just saw me add. Um, I know, I just can't believe it happened. Where did it come from, I think? I bought two new plants, not gonna name where I got them from, and it was one of the two plants that already had hydra in them. Essentially what happens is it comes on plants, hardwood, um, it can even be added from water, and basically I started feeding my tank more because I had the fish in here, and I think when I added those two plants, not think, it was one of the two plants had hydra on there, and it spread throughout my tank. Typically I do pre-wash them, but I haven't pre-washed a lot of my plants for a long time because I hadn't had any issues. The only thing I had was pest snails, which I was fine with because I have assassin snails, which by the way, I had assassin snail in here. He's up in another holding tank, not with my nearite snails by themselves. So that was an issue. Anyways, coming back, how did I treat it? So what I went through and did was took out my nearite snails. I noticed them in there and I used no planaria. It tells you the instructions on here. It comes with a scoop. I used one full scoop to start. I do not have active carbon in this filter. If y'all remember, I use um, Purigen, which I guess I could have looked up to see if that does pull in. You're supposed to use active carbon when it's done. So I will do that on probably the fifth day because I'm gonna check the fourth day that they're all gone out of my aquarium. But essentially you add no planaria. You'll see me adding it right now for my third dose, which is I did yesterday uh, 0.5. And then so Sunday I did one and then Monday I did 0.5. And today I'm doing 0.25 of the scoop that they give you. There's a scoop that comes with it that we'll be adding today. So that's been my journey. Um, day one, I didn't film. I know I was embarrassed, but I'm showing you as you're listening. So you don't have to be embarrassed. Maybe you're not, but I was. Um, then day number two, you'll see right now. So day number two, essentially how no planaria works is it actually either paralyzes them and then it also ruins the cell membrane structure of them. So day number two, you're seeing the stem of them, not the tentacles that come out and they're still stuck to my plants. So that means they are stunned, they are paralyzed, they are not dead yet. And then that's what you're seeing now. Some of them still alive day Three, today you're seeing some of them are not even on the same plants because they're gone, they fell off, they're dead hopefully, um, but some are still stuck onto there. But you don't see the tentacles because they're stunned and paralyzed, so they're not feeding or eating. I'm not feeding my tank, so highly recommend stop feeding your tank. I took out my um, algae inhibitor and I also took out my CO2 of this tank. So nothing's happening from a feeding perspective. I'm not nutrients, nothing. I have super expensive shrimp in here, so I was hyper worried. The no planaria hasn't shown any side effects to any of my shrimp as dosed as recommended. You do need to watch out from your recommended dose. It's not your tank size, it's the volume of water that's in your aquarium. So I remember when I was filling this up, I only had 16 gallons of water when I filled this thing up, even though it's a 20 gallon tank. So be aware the water volume that's actually in your aquarium for your dosing regimen. Read the instructions. <laughs> My shrimp are fine. I dosed it. So day one, they receded. Day three, day one, two. So day two, they receded. Day three today, they some have fallen off finally from where they were um, suction cupped. Because again, they're like a sea urchin. They suction cup to the either the glass or your leaves, your plants, or your substrate. And some of them are starting to fall off finally. You'll see the area right now that I main focused on where I noticed them. You'll see these white little dots. That is their stem. They don't have the tentacles because they're paralyzed and stunned right now. So they're not able to feed, which causes them to die off. They also have reduced cell growth, which prevents them from budding using no planaria. So coming back now, today, which you just saw a clip of where they're at, some of them still, 
And then you'll also see a small clip of um, an Anubis leaf that had three on it. And now it only has one left. I'm going to redose the last dosing, see where we're at tomorrow and see if they've all fell off, fallen off. If they haven't, I may or may not redose a small amount or I may just let the tank run. Highly recommend when I've been doing research that you do want to have oxygen running in your tank. So I do have an aerator running right here. So you may not be able to see it, but I did add a, um, an air pump with an air stone. So it's adding additional oxygen into here. I do have a um, lily pipe that has a skimmer on it. So that's been adding air into it as well. So you do want lots of aeration um, in case you have uh, ammonia spikes. Everything is doing fine. All of my shrimp are fine. All of my fish are fine. I removed all of the inverts out of there from snails. Everything else is doing great. So the shrimp are fine, but let's go through and dose this last part of the tank. All right, so here's the scoop that it comes with. And this is supposed to be 0.25, so right about there. I'm gonna scoop that into here. So this is just a solo cup that I have. Then I add, we're gonna go up to here. Then all I do is get a little bit of water from in here. Then I just mix it even more. Make sure this is well mixed. Now I'm going to, since again, I have this lily pipe that has a surface skimmer, I just pour it directly into the surface skimmer and let it go right into the tank. So that is the last dose of this. It starts to circulate around. You can see my air stone. You can see happy shrimp still. No cares in the world. And he's swimming. Look at that. <clears throat> but again, everything has been fine from a shrimp level. Again, I didn't have any nearites in here. You'll see right here on this leaf, there's one right there there which you, you saw in my macro film and it used to have three on there on that anubis leaf um, there's a bunch back here that you can see and that's that same image you saw earlier back on this plant here there's some right here under this leaf these white little dots some right here that's where the main outbreak was and then they just were like the main concentration. So that's where I think the outbreak was, which narrows in on what plant they probably came from. Um, but again, that's been my process so far. Once these have fallen off by day four, if they haven't fallen off, I'll wait another day. The way to get rid of the no planaria out of your aquarium is using um, activated carbon. So to use activated carbon, you just, I'm just going to put it in my filter. I'll clean the filter because I haven't cleaned it since um, I've ran this tank and cycled it. So I'll just pull the filter out. I'll add some activated carbon and that essentially latches onto um, your, your, the additive. And I keep forgetting the name, the betel nut palm extract basically gets absorbed by that activated carbon. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I'll vacuum the substrate. I'll probably wait about two to three weeks after before I added my nearite snails because I have heard of nearite snails not being active and alive and perishing because there's still some of the betel nut in the substrate when they're going around. So I just want to make sure everyone's fine when we bring everyone back into the tank. So just take your time. Do not stress, you're gonna make it through this Hydra experience just like I did. Now I used Hydra, uh, sorry, no planaria. I used Hydra, I used no planaria 
because I have sensitive shrimp and I can't get fish that eat them because they're larger, that eat hydro. And I didn't want to use an extreme measure from a chemical perspective and just nuke the beneficial bacteria that's in this aquarium already. Because I just set it up. So again, that's not what I wanted to do. That's why I went with no planaria. I fortunately had a separate tank that I could let my nearite snails live in until they're ready to go back into here. So that was my story. They've already started dying off, so I call it a success. I'll keep you all posted, but hopefully you found this helpful. And if you have, please take this moment to like and subscribe, set those notifications. And if you have any questions about my Hydra adventure, don't feel afraid to comment because I'm here to answer any questions. But until next time, I'll see you all actually on another build video.